with that, I'd like to introduce some of our presenters for today. Uh, today's session will be led by Results Positive Solutions architect and founder, Mr. John Ferner, more than 20 year veteran in the IT service industry. We'll be joined by Eileen John, senior manager of the HMSA program management office. And we'll also hear from Michelle Katchik, who currently serves as the senior manager of the HMSA IT portfolio management office. Uh, all of our presenters have extensive experience implementing and managing ServiceNow instances, and we'll be reviewing some of the top ways that you can spearhead organizational change while improving your resource allocation, portfolio visibility, and overall executive decision making. And with that, we'll go ahead and turn the time over to John to kick things off. Thanks so much, Sean, and welcome everyone to our webinar today. And a big thank you to Eileen and Michelle for joining us today. And there'll be uh, the bulk of the presentation today will then to share their experience in implementing uh, ServiceNow strategic portfolio management. So uh, thanks again for Eileen and Michelle for joining us. In terms of just a brief agenda, uh, we're going to be turning it over to Eileen to give a background on HMSA, Hawaii Medical Service Association, uh, a little bit of background and their uh, ServiceNow journey so far. And then we're gonna focus in on three key areas that we highlight here in the, the webinar uh, invitation. So. Uh, the migration from their legacy uh, project uh, solution to ServiceNow uh, SPM and the associated components with that. Um, and then we'll uh, talk about the demand intake and prioritization and how they've implemented uh, that solution as well as their associated processes and organizational change. And then we'll uh, a chance to review uh, some of the enhanced reporting visibility that they've been able to accomplish uh, with some of the uh, innovative and creative reporting solutions. And then at the end, we'll have uh, keys to success. And Eileen and Michelle will share their keys to success. After that, we'll talk about next steps uh, and uh, how you can uh, take access to results positive and assist you in your SPM journey. So just a brief introduction before I turn it over to Eileen. Those of you that might not be familiar with results positive, we've been helping organizations over the last 18 years uh, really drive positive outcomes based upon their technology investments. And our strategic partner, uh, ServiceNow, is what we're focusing on today, uh, focusing here around strategic portfolio management, as well as service management, helping organizations manage their service management uh, functions from HR, customer, and IT uh, services. One thing that we also do in terms of providing a positive uh, outcomes is focusing in on application development and analytics, uh, really key and very important around strategic portfolio management, giving the visibility that's needed uh, to executives that they can consume in a format that they prefer, at the same time making that available to all stakeholders uh, so that there's no uh, lack of transparency and there's no uh, surprises there uh, for making uh, better business decisions. So we've enjoyed the opportunity in working with uh, Eileen and Michelle and their team. So Eileen, I'll turn it over to you and uh, take us through the company overview and I'll uh, manage the slides here as you go through. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks, John. Um, yes, so my name is Eileen John. I work for HMSA, Hawaii Medical Association. It was founded in 1938. We're about to celebrate 85 years. Uh, we are a uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, licensee. Um, our, our company is comprised of about uh, 1,200 employees, and uh, in addition to contractors, uh, our entire user base is about 2,200. Um, we are a nonprofit. Um, we um, cover uh, about 700,000 lives in Hawaii, which makes up about 50% of the population. So we're very proud of our standing in the community, and we really take um, our position seriously in, in taking care of the well being and the community that is Hawaii and doing that with Aloha. So um, our, our mission is really to be uh, very affordable. Um, we 93% uh, of our membership um, premiums go back to the patient care. We only retain 7% to actually manage our operations, which if you're familiar with healthcare, that's extremely low. Um, so we, again, try and take our mission very seriously to um, be sustainable and provide value for our community. Thanks, John. And now we'll give you a little background on our ServiceNow implementation. John, did you want to lead in with anything? Uh, yeah, just uh, highlight here that uh, we had a chance to engage with the team actually in uh, 2019 to uh, help guide them and, and provide uh, 
advisement around best practice for implementation of SPM, uh, which was completed around the July 2020 timeframe. And uh, I'd just like to kind of lead in that uh, Eileen's been managing the platform and she uh, has a leadership there uh, to guide and direct the organization and kind of guide and direct the roadmap there for ServiceNow. So Eileen, I'll turn it over to you to kind of highlight the journey you guys have been on and uh, things sure. are in place. Sounds great. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so we did start our journey in July uh, 2018 and started with IT service management. Uh, started that uh, mainly uh, within IT and then rolled it out with the service portal to the uh, entire enterprise in January of 2019. Uh, during that time, we also implemented contract vendor and risk management. So all of our uh, contract intake uh, requests, uh, and workflows related to contracts are in service now. We also implemented software and hardware asset management. Um, and then as John notes, uh, uh, we, sorry, we did business continuity management as well. Um, and then we started our journey with um, John doing, it was IT business management at the time and worked on uh, project portfolio management uh, and implemented that in July, 2020. We currently have human resource uh, uh, in flight and uh, integration hub and automation engine uh, um, processes in place as well. So, John, did you want to lead in? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we had a chance to really start the project here around uh, strategic portfolio management, uh, i.e. ITBM at the time, as Eileen mentioned trying to understand the overall IT goals and objectives so we can align uh, to those goals and objectives as a part of the SPM implementation. So I mean, if you wanted to highlight a little bit more about the, the IT goals and, and what you guys are trying to accomplish. Yes. Um, the number one thing we were trying to uh, do was make it easier and more transparent for our end users. Um, before ServiceNow, uh, we, we did have a, a help desk uh, um, ticketing system, but there was no transparency to the user as far as where their ticket was at, who was assigned to it, who was, you know, uh, if it was done or not. Um, and so we really wanted to make it easier for folks to um, engage. And once we did that, we also found that we would benefit by having more on the platform and more transparency around our project and portfolio management, um, demand management. Um, and we just found tremendous value in the tool. Um, and uh, the service portal was uh, very easy for folks to use um, and, and be able to see. So um, we also had just, you know, so many different systems that it made it hard to find uh, um, you know, either the status of a project or a ticket or or any uh, status of a contract, any of these things. So with ServiceNow, we've been able to streamline um, all of our workflows and approvals, and it's just a much better user experience. Um, so we're, we're really thrilled with what we've been able to do on the platform. And you can see we've got a pretty extensive uh, implementation of ServiceNow. Yeah, thanks, Eileen. Uh, so one thing we did at the start of the SPM uh, project was uh, really kind of reviewing the core uh, PPM uh, goals, objectives, and outcomes that we typically do with organizations. And so that was a very nice uh, fit into their overall IT goals, but also uh, gave us a, a focus on some of the key outcomes they're looking for with some of the initial implementation. So around in increasing the strategic business value, that really was a, a focus around the demand intake process and really making sure that they're selecting the right uh, investments as a part of that process. And then as a result of that, uh, being able to increase the business outcomes associated with those initiatives, whether it be to increase uh, the overall uh, cost savings, if you will, or uh, increase the overall growth associated with their patients and their overall care that they're providing. Next, uh, a key area, uh, as Eileen mentioned, they want look to streamline how to put everything onto one platform and so that really helped them uh, a lot around reducing their administrative burdens, both from an overall administration perspective when it came to reporting, being able to automate portfolio program status reporting, have a consistent uh, layout, a uh, look and feel for that uh, was really key. Also time management was really important here. So being able to re report time against projects 
as well as non-project work in one solution really helped reduce a lot of the time and effort uh, for time management. So that's kind of a high level view of the core outcomes that the organization was looking for as we started the SPM journey. Uh, Eileen, I'll turn it over to you and Michelle, if there's anything else you wanted to highlight in terms of uh, the desired outcomes or, or even just outcomes you've been able to achieve. Sure, I'll speak and then uh, Michelle, if you want to jump in. You know, one of the main things when we started our implementation uh, with John and Results Positive was that we really wanted his um, business expertise and, and best practice uh, guidance. Uh, you know, we, we had taken, a you know, opportunities to try and streamline, but um, we just didn't have the expertise in-house um, of what best practice would look like. So we really stressed to John, you know, even though we're the customer here, if we're asking for something that's that's ill-advised, tell us. And he was great in making great recommendations to us um, to make sure we actually met our, our goals and outcomes. Um, and whenever, you know, we were heading in a direction that was maybe going to cause more administration that we wanted or more manual processes, John was really creative and really worked with us uh, to find what was going to be the, the best solution and lead us on the right track. Um, so that's, you know, part of our implementation foundation. But Michelle, did you want to add anything about uh, how we're currently managing and what value you're finding? Yeah, definitely. For sure. I can't... Uh... I'm fairly new to HMSA, so I can't take credit for any of the great work that Eileen and John did on the migration. So I'll let them continue to speak to that journey. But from from my perspective, and I imagine, you know, from many of you who are working in project offices or portfolio management offices, there's a lot of different systems that are used to, you know, track the things that John mentioned, you know, the project reporting, time reporting, you know, the various different systems that we use. So the benefit that I see definitely is having everything all together in one system that can help us meet these objectives. And then two, secondly, is, you know, where we're able to kind of grow that capability um, so now we're we're looking at enabling the strategic planning workspace so we can really focus on aligning work to strategy. I think that's another common problem uh, in organizations is just, you know, more projects than uh, you have the capacity to do. So it becomes even more important, I think, to be able to focus on the work that's strategic and is going to kind of move the needle for your organization on those you know, chosen strategic priorities and initiatives and to be able to see all of the work, um, not just in IT where we started with the SPM implementation, but now we're moving to enabling the organization, the broader organization to use the tool so that we can track um, project work across the company. Yeah, thanks uh, Eileen and Michelle, appreciate your feedback there. and. It's definitely been a great collaboration effort here to uh, assist you uh, in really uh, focusing in on those business outcomes. Next, we wanted just to highlight to everyone to understand briefly what the overall solution uh, was originally implemented, as well as the current state of the solution. So this is kind of a high level uh, picture of the current state. As Michelle just mentioned, there's the uh, strategic planning uh, workspace that's being uh, reviewed now and, and look at being implementing that uh, here shortly. But uh, you kind of look here at the overall solution. First and foremost was demand management, having the service portal to have that one central place where demands can come in. And then from there, go through a process to uh, analyze, score, uh, prioritize those particular demands to make those decisions. Uh, and then from there, once those are approved, creating the project and being able to then manage that project and also do that by having a consistent uh, status report that executives liked and, and kind of reduce a lot of the administrative burden uh, for different status reports being created. From a reporting perspective, uh, that's been a little bit of a journey uh, as you would expect with a different adoption. So now they have a great executive dashboard, resource availability portal. They use the investment portal as well, as well as a lot of other uh, dashboards and reports that they use uh, in the organization. So in summary, uh, the current solutions around demand management, uh, that intake, 
managing your projects, project uh, management, also your resource estimates, uh, your project estimates, uh, projects and uh, budgets and financials are really important. Time management is also key. Another thing that they're looking at, uh, futures looking at uh, the full and, and kind of resource management uh, component as well, but today focusing in on uh, resource estimates. So I'll kind of pause it there. Is there any other solution areas there that you'd like to highlight, uh, Eileen or uh, Michelle? No, I, I will just add, and I know we're going to get to it on the next slide as well. Just um, it has been um, just a tremendous advantage to have all of our information in one system. The reporting and dashboards, um, our CIO looks at his project portfolio dashboard daily. And even when I add a new widget on there, he's like, what's this new widget? <laughs> I'm like, wow, you saw that. So um, it's the, the system has been very easy to work with and uh, just having that uh, transparency uh, across all areas of the portfolio management has been um, just a huge win for us. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Thanks uh, for, for that. Uh, feedback as well as kind of a preamble, if you will, for some of the, the upcoming slides mm -hmm. here. So I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, Eileen, to talk about the journey here as part of your implementation, that, mi that migration from your legacy system to ServiceNow, and some of the challenges, solutions that you had there, and some of the benefits. So turn that over yeah. to you. Thanks. Yeah, one of our biggest challenges, and I kind of, you know, touched on this already, was we, we had several different systems. So we had... Um, uh, when I joined HMSA, we were on uh, MS Project Standalone. We have a pretty substantial project portfolio. Um, you know, over at, at the time, it was $20 million, 200 projects, and doing that in uh, MS Project Standalone, Excel spreadsheets, SharePoint sites, all of this stuff was extremely challenging. Many nights working till 2 a.m. trying to consolidate information together <laughs> to do reporting. Um, and uh, so we um, did a migration to uh, Microsoft Project Server, and that was a huge transformation for us now. At least all of our projects were, were in one place, but we still had financials in a different system. Uh, it was very difficult to pull all of our information together um, for demands and projects. Uh, it, it was very disjointed. Uh, the other challenge we had was once we had put um, IT service management in place, the question around time reporting and stuff was, well, how much time are we spending on incidents and problems? And I want to see all of my work in one place. I've got, you know, my project tasks over here and, and MS project and then all of my other work. So although we had had, you know, a, a good implementation of, of project server and we're, you know, happy with, with the results, we really understood that it made sense to get all of our work into one place, and that was going to be ServiceNow. So um, we we uh, made the decision to move forward uh, to put it into ServiceNow. And so we had, at the time, again, about 200 uh, existing uh, projects that were in flight that we needed to uh, uh, bring over. Um, but... Um, Working with John, we were able to um, figure out a migration plan that allowed us to import uh, the project schedules in and um, import the demands in. And really, our goal of the migra migration from MS Project Server again to, to ServiceNow was making it easy for our end users. Uh, you know, we, we had a lot of projects in uh, execution that, you know, we couldn't put them at risk because we were switching systems. So it was really about how do we try to minimize impact on our uh, project managers, how to give them a better user experience, right? Everybody was so used to using MS Project for years and years. So now we're going to switch the solution on them. So, you know, making sure that they understood how to use the new tool, giving them, you know, what's in it for me kind of wins of, you know, uh, how they were going to gain efficiencies uh, and, and have better visibility on all of their projects was really part of the, the key um, uh, in uh, implementing our, our transition to ServiceNow. Um, and folks have come to me and just said how, how happy they are that all of their work is now in one place and they can see 
you know, not only the incidents and uh, IT minor requests and stuff and all of their project work all in one place. And then the time tracking has been great for us to be able to see where are we spending our time for, you know, uh, as Michelle touched on, there's there's more work than we have people. So understanding where folks are are spending their time is really critical. And then having that visibility to prioritize our work so next uh, topic here is the demand intake and prioritization. And so I uh, wanted to turn that over to Michelle to talk about how they're doing demand intake today, how they're using their prioritization model to uh, assist in making those decisions and uh, just the, uh, the importance of organizational change as part of uh, demand intake and prioritization. So Michelle, turn it over to you. Yeah, great, thanks so much. Um, yeah, so one of the, you know, other great benefits is the ability to do all of the, the project intake or demand, uh, proposed project intake in the system. Uh, so they can just, those are those ones that are approved can just move right into the project tracking side and planning side of the SPM. Um, and so it's, it really helps us manage you know, not only the prioritization process uh, in terms of, you know, putting together all of the information and the business case and the scoring and the benefits to be able to move through that review process, but also manage the backlog um, in a kind of really more organized way, I feel, um, that benefits us. And so really, you know, uh, when we're looking at how we're using the, the system, uh, we're able to capture that alignment, as I was talking about earlier, to our organization's strategic priorities, understand where, you know, proposed projects are fitting in terms of the roadmap and the return on investment for the organization, and use that uh, to make informed decisions about how we want to, you know, fund projects and allot capacity and resources to projects. Great. Thanks so much, Michelle. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here. And uh, uh, so uh, one is, can you share anything? Because a lot of times organizations are curious on how other organizations classify their demands, if you classify them in different types of, of views uh, there. So that would be uh, kind of one question if there's anything you can share there. Yeah, definitely. So our, you know, primary categories of uh, and really we're looking at, I'm speaking from the IT perspective. So for IT projects, in particular, we look at them in these two sort of broad categories of strategic and non-strategic so that we can understand, you know, which are the projects that are going to help the organization be the current year or near term and long-term strategic objectives and then which projects are more focused on the, you know, operational, run the business, keeping the lights on. Type of project. So those are the two broad categories and definitely ServiceNow uh, enables us to, to track in those categories, but also to kind of drill down using the portfolio and programs, um, associating different goals with different projects. So it's fairly robust in terms of how, you know, details we can make um, to use. Uh, thanks so much, Michelle. Uh, do you have any other insights on uh, how you kind of scope out and, and do the intake around those uh, business as usual uh, operational type items versus the strategic ones? Do you go through the same level of prioritization? Just curious, are some of the common questions customers are curious about? Great. We go through essentially the same process for all of the projects that Strategic projects definitely maybe a little bit more rigor in terms of what the business case uh, value is and how, you know, confirming that alignment to the organization strategy. But really for all of the projects, they go through very similar stages of the process in terms of understanding, you know, what, what information do we need to know about this project to be able to prioritize it? So how urgent is it? You know, is there technical debt associated with it? All of those things we're able to track in the demand. That's great. Uh, one other common question is, and, and I know this is something that we went through in the initial implementation here, but just uh, any summary you would have on the key roles that are key participants in that intake process, mm -hmm. um, requester to your team, to those that are, 
you know, creating the estimates and uh, really defining the, uh, the request details. Yeah, definitely. There's a few key roles on the, you know, on the portfolio planning team on my team, we have demand managers who are really there to help the business requester uh, who's requesting the technology solution, understand you know, what the, the problem is um, and how we can approach it from a technology perspective. And they also help to manage the, the entire review, the proposed project or demand review process. But they also involve, so the requester is definitely a key role in the process um, who, you know, could be the business owner, it could be somebody requesting on their behalf um, from IT, maybe one of the development team managers who they have a close relationship with in terms of their application. Um, and so the, the IT managers are also often very closely involved. Enterprise architecture plays a key role in the demand review process so that we can start the um, architecture review process really early on rather than waiting um, until the project phase to do that. And then the other key thing that's become really important to us uh, that Eileen mentioned earlier is being able to track all of those estimates. So planned, you know, effort hours, of course, this is at the, you know, the early stages uh, before the project starts. So it's the high level estimates, but starting to track those at that level, um, you know, at minimum, give us some information in terms of planning for, you know, funding and capacity. Great, thank you. That's a great summary of uh, some of those key roles. It sounds like it's the requester, uh, the demand manager, probably key is the business and their participation and collaboration with the demand manager. And it sounds like enterprise architecture and then Kind of curious, uh, at what point does your team get involved to assess and review and help with that uh, prioritization and approval process? Right. So once we've, you know, the demand phase phases are, you know, there's a number of different phases you can go through in that demand stage. So starting right from sort of ideation or, you know, draft to submitting a proposed project. And then we go through a qualifying and screening process. And as part of that process, we look at scoring the projects and prioritizing the projects so that we can understand um, how they fit into the overall scope of work that we've um, got on, on the IT plate. And then we, we're we able to take that information and it's nice to have everything in one place and we can run the reports or use the dashboards to take that to our uh, IT planning steering committee to be able to then, you know, confirm the priority of the project within the organization uh, and then come up with sort of the, the list of how we want to um, allocate funds and resources. Oh, that's great. Yeah, thanks for, for mentioning that, highlighting some of the governance entities such as your IT steering committee. Definitely uh, those governance entities we find are really uh, critical as part of the final prioritization and, uh, and approval there. So thank you. Uh, one of the next uh, things that we wanted to, uh, to to share with everyone is to have Eileen and uh, Michelle talk about uh, reporting, talk about uh, how some of the enhanced reporting and some of the uh, the kind of custom reporting solutions that we've uh, collaborated with and built upon some of our uh, core solutions to really help uh, the executives, the stakeholders here. So uh, Michelle, if you wanted to uh, start and sure. Yeah, as Eileen mentioned before, the the reporting capabilities are, you know, really great, um, really detailed. The ability to sort of customize reports to see, you know, at the information kind of sliced and diced however you want um, is really quick and really easy. Uh, so um, in order to build, you know, sometimes those ad hoc report requests that you get. Uh, and then the other benefit is one of the reports that John mentioned, I think he helped um, us with and did a, a custom report is on sort of an overall uh, CIO dashboard for demands and projects that are 
CIO uses quite a lot. He uses with his peers and his direct reports to review the projects and, you know, it enables him to see at a very high level what's going on in terms of an overall roadmap, but also to drill down into, you know, quite a, you know, bit of detail in terms of looking at the status report, the most current status report for the project, understanding the planned hours. Um, and, you know, risks, milestones, all of those things that are um, really important and key that folks might want to be able to see when they're looking at a dashboard. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, Eileen, I know you guys use a lot of out of the box reporting. So do you want to give a kind of a summary of what you use there and then yeah. show some of the, the custom stuff we've done? Sure. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of um, out of the box reporting, and it's uh, as Michelle said, it's it's really kind of quick and easy to to set those up. So we've got, and then we create dashboards. So we've got a project manager dashboard, and it allows you to do dynamic criteria. So like uh, you know, the project manager is me kind of thing, right? So so when they see the dashboard, it's actually tailored. Uh, to their projects, right? They are not um, looking at the full portfolio. Obviously, we have dashboards that have the full portfolio, but uh, it just really allows you to, as Michelle said, slice and dice the information, drill down into it. Um, there, there are some limitations, which is why John created some custom portals for us. Um, the demand and projects are two separate tables and you know joining those together um, takes a little bit more advanced uh, knowledge <laughs> and technical skills but um, you know wanting to see those things together and and just really be able to filter on things john has done a tremendous job we will show you some screenshots of that in a bit but um, i've had it leaders come to me and say hey you know they're, they're aligned to certain business pillars and so we've created dashboards for them so that when they meet with their executives, they're able to, to, to bring up the relevant, um, not only project work, but um, you know number of requests from their area, the business applications that they have in their area. So they're really able to see, um, you know, on a single pane of glass, their, their entire kind of relationship with, with IT, um, with the reporting that we've been able to um, use and, uh, you know, with what we've got on the platform. So, uh, just that transparency, they can go in there anytime and see the status of their project real time. We put some, you know, uh, recommendations for project managers to update their project statuses weekly and all of those kind of things to make sure, because if the data is not good, then, you know, that that's a problem, right? So making sure you've got governance around um, having good data is really important as well. Um, since there is so much transparency <laughs> and people can go in there anytime and just go, look, you, you don't want to have bad data. So making sure that you um, bake that into your processes is really important as well. That's a good point, Eileen, because uh, what we found visibility is really key for uh, making better decisions. So you have that full capability, uh, visibility, if you will, uh, of what's being requested, what the current progress status is of your current strategic investment. So I'm just kind of curious, uh, has having the CIO daily access and going in daily, has that been a positive thing for the organization? Because you know, sometimes transparency can be scary. <laughs> I, I feel it's been really good because um, in some cases it's like, well, why are we doing, how much have we spent on this project? <laughs> and you know, he's able, now we do also have control. So not everybody can see all the financials and, and all of that, but he definitely has the information that he needs and our leadership has that at their fingertips. Um, so uh, I think it's been a great thing because he will ask, you know, or why is this project on hold? Um, you know, why is this project red? <laughs> so it's really allowed him to hone in where we need, you know, maybe executive assistance sometimes to um, uh, um, get decisions made uh, in a timely manner and understanding the impact of some of our key strategic projects. So I, I think it's been just uh, tremendously valuable to uh, have the transparency and the reporting capabilities that he's got and, and our leadership has at their fingertips. Uh, Eileen, I'll give you like a couple minutes if you want to talk about a couple of the keys to success. We'll turn it over to Michelle and then we'll open up for some uh, roundtable discussion. Sounds great. Thanks, John. 
Yes, in, in our implementation, we really um, did try to keep it sim simple. What's a minimal viable product that will help us? We've got lots of uh, um, audit requirements, so making sure that we met all of those. But it was really trying to stick to crawl, walk, run, um, and uh, again, um, partner flexibility. John was just tremendous. Uh, you know um, the out of the box solution like with status reports and some reporting just didn't fit our needs so john was able to provide these um you know uh sample templates for us for some of these uh status report and and executive dashboard because he's worked with other customers and saw this kind of gap in what ServiceNow provides and what we need as a, you know to actually manage our, our portfolios and have it be visually appealing and consistent so um, just, you know, his, his flexibility and um, helping us um, in, in knowing what some of those recommendations are. Um, again, the improved visibility, uh, the C-suite is loving this. Uh, and we really took an organizational change mindset. We understood this was going to be a big change, not just for our project managers, but for the organization. So we really baked that into our implementation timeline, made sure that we were bringing in uh, um, folks along the way to get feedback. We had a little pilot group. Um, and focus groups uh, to uh, show them things. And so we would get feedback along the way. So we didn't just put this in production and then have all of this feedback <laughs> um, after the fact that, oh, this you know is not working for me. So, um, so um, just having and baking that in to our implementation was really, really critical. Understanding that change is always hard for folks and, and allowing time and, and forums for them to kind of um, share um, their feedback was really, really important for us. Yeah, thanks so much, Eileen. Yeah, I think it, these are some common uh, keys to success that we've seen with multiple organizations here. Uh, Michelle, is there anything else you wanted to highlight? I mean, you did a good job there, but just know if there's anything else from your perspective you'd like to highlight. Yeah, I think, um, thanks. That was a great overview. And I think, you know, the, the, the keep it simple approach, I think to me is, you know, really key in terms of there is so much that you can do and enable with SPM and ServiceNow that it, you know, can be, I think, overwhelming. But I think that having an approach that sort of starts off, like Eileen said, with that sort of crawl, walk, run approach to understand, you know, how can we, you know, implement the you know the first phase of this and and get it up and running and bring the organization along with you because it is you know a change from the way people are operating uh, and then you know put that foundation in place to enable you to grow um, which I think you know they Eileen and John did a really great job with that's now put us in a in a good place where we're able to grow not only the the functionality of how we're using SPM, but also, um, you know, grow in terms of how the organization is using it. Because now I see, you know, business areas who manage projects um, on their teams coming to Eileen and saying, hey, can we also use this um, SPM that you're, that IT is using for our projects? So it's been really, um, really good to see that. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's great uh, insights there just the, the power of keeping it simple and how that can help across the organization. So just a couple other things here to highlight uh, to everyone. As you saw some of the reporting examples there uh, that uh, they use there at HMSA from the C-suite and the stakeholders. So uh, we have some pre-built solutions here uh, in our reporting solutions and we take those and we tailor those uh, to some of the examples that you saw here earlier. Um, and so this is based on our experience here for the last 18 years, helping customers around their strategic portfolio management and understanding kind of what are some of the core simple things that executive stakeholders will want to see. Uh, also putting them in a format, graphical format and such uh, so that uh, it's easily consumed. Um, so that's what we have here with our overall reporting solutions. Uh, just as, as an example here, these are kind of common uh, and these uh, almost all of these are being used uh, with all the different healthcare organizations that we're working with. So uh, the executive project portfolio portal, uh, giving you a view across uh, 
ideas, demands, and projects, sometimes just demands and projects, uh, and then be able to help in that decision making, one and two page project stash reports, business case, project charter reports, the resource availability uh, key. Um, so those are some, and as well as the, uh, the program status report. So those are common ones that uh, most uh, organizations start off with, if you will. Uh, and then we have additional ones. We have a strategic plan balance scorecard that's tied in the strategic planning workspace. So if you're, you have a more of a, a balanced scorecard uh, need, you can tie that to your strategic plans and priorities, tie it into your overall primary goals. Uh, so if you're looking for a, a balanced scorecard, your executives are, that's a, a really good uh, solution. If you're looking at earned value across the different uh, execution methods. Uh, we've uh, done that for multiple organizations, project closeout report, benefit realization reports. Basically, it's another uh, template for your project status uh, and be the similar type of report there, but that's a way to kind of track closeout and benefits. Same thing around uh, lessons learned. We do have a lot of work management, so you can kind of see the volume of work coming into the organization. Uh, and how much time is being spent against that volume of work. Uh, some KPIs as well as uh, really kind of detailed ITSM uh, request lifecycle KPIs. So just some additional type of report portals uh, that provide a specific set of capabilities uh, for organizations to uh, manage their uh, delivery of services. But typically what customers do is next steps. You wanna schedule a session with us to do a health check, see where you're at today if you're already using ServiceNow. Here again, it could be a demo of just core capabilities and why you might want to uh, migrate to ServiceNow. Obviously, number two here, you could schedule a review of our solutions here and see if any of those are appropriate and how we would tailor those for your organization. Uh, number three here, we definitely do a lot of implementations. Uh, as you're kind of seeing here, we have different methods, a complete implementation to advisory guided setup, uh, so different types of options there, or uh, you could also attend one of our upcoming training sessions. So those are some of the common next steps from our webinar. So feel free to reach out to us. Uh, as Sean provides you with the information uh, tomorrow. So we'll turn it back over to you. Um, maybe we're out of time, actually, it looks like. I was trying to be uh, quick there, but we can definitely follow up with those questions via email. Uh, so why don't we do that? Uh, Sean, I'll turn it over to you. And thanks again uh, for Eileen and, and Michelle for uh, presenting today and sharing their experience uh, and their expertise. So thank you again, Eileen and Michelle, and uh, thank everyone for participating. Sean, turn it over to you for closing statements. Mm -hmm.